ਕਿ ਮੇਰੇ ਨੋਟ ਸੀ so this is our architecture at the moment guys in order to understand any technology in order to understand any technology <laughs> in order to understand any technology guys in order to understand any technology we need to have the depth of understanding of basic components so this is we are understanding basic components so you you been through citrix you been through sccm you been through uh, windows basics now windows basics might be a bit blur for us at the moment because we did that long time back um, but they are still in our memories they are still here uh, because you are making active directory you are connecting to act active directory <coughs> so here in vmware these are the components that we just created so those components are number 1 host number 1 host number 2 vc1 NFCC 01 ES61 So two hosts one client and so far we don't have active directory if you have it I'm not making active directory because we I, I, I don't have it if you have active directory it's fine but active directory at this stage is not required if you have it it's okay uh now on this server we have a, we installed a vc vs client so here we installed a vs client how do you install vs client from the cd you can install it from the cd so vs client you can get it from the vcenter cd or you can get it from internet two places vs client you can get it from cd or from internet exactly like citrix receiver citrix receiver you can get it from cd or from internet as well and this is vs client that is used to manage each host separately we all understand that so here we understand this now in this the ip addresses we use is 192168 100 101 and 101.50 and 101.55 for this one is 15 dc is 10 so before i move on with v center let's quickly explore our uh, our v sphere client so everyone go on to your v sphere client and now try to understand how to read this v sphere client So everything in a vSphere client starts from this login. So the first time you log in, which is this one, and you will get this icon if you have installed vSphere client. Let's say if this icon is not available, let's say sometime it is deleted, it's not available. Then from where do you get it? You can you can get it from start. You can get it from all programs, and you can get it from VMware, and it's right here. And I can again put it back here as a shortcut. so this is there so this icon not being here doesn't mean that it's not installed you must drill down more and see now once you double click on this and it will try to connect so first of all you need to enter the name or ip address of a uh, host and then use a root account and the password and then you will be able to connect it will give you a warning of certificate since we don't have certificate it's fine um sometimes in real environment we don't have certificate so all you need to do ignore it So once you are connected it will be connected like this and once it is connected guys i want you to have an understanding of this just like we have an understanding of a uh, uh, windows server so here here now let's look at it so let's say if it is it is like this now first of all first of how many times 
First of all, first of all, guys, now it's a very, very difficult question that I'm going to ask. And that question goes to Saqib, the friend, Qasim. No, Qasim. And the question here is, how do you see a C drive in Windows 2008? If you know the answer, you have only exactly 0, 0, 0 0.1 second done finished. It was finished. You had only 0, 0 0.1 second. Okay. No, it's excellent. How do we go? Guys, the, my main point is this. So you go to Windows Explorer and you go here. And basically, this is your C drive. Do we understand everyone? Now, yes. Why are we looking at the C drive? Because the storage of this server is C drive. Okay. Now, let's keep that in mind. And I'm going to show you the storage of ESXi host. It's in a little different location. So just like you know C drive here, within ESXi host, the same location is right here. So you go to host, and then you go right all the way to, so first of all, go to summary, go to summary, and basically this place is my computer. This, this place where it says the storage, this is my computer. Now within my computer, in Windows Explorer, here, in Windows Explorer, it was C drive, here, the same drive is called data store one. So this is how we need to remember it. Somebody says, go to the storage of ESXi host. So it's very simple. You can go to summary, and then you can go here. Now, how to open C drive? You just double click on C drive and open it. Guys, in this case, you need to right click on this, and then you say browse data store. So browse C drive or data store. It's the same thing. Now, as soon as you open it, now it shows you the location of what is in C drive. So at the moment, since I have only one VM, it is showing me one VM. So it's not showing me everything. So, so basically, once I start creating more VMs, it will show me folders of more VMs. Now, if I go into this VMs folder, it shows me all the files that are made up of that VM. So now, let's look at this here. So we created a VM inside. We created a VM inside here, because this is a hypervisor. And we named it, we named it, Caleb, VM, no, no, we created it last time. If you don't have it, just create another one. No, you created it. We, it, it doesn't appear automatically. So here, if it is here and you are inside, guys, VMs are made up of files. So we know that VMs are made up of files. The most important files are these. Number one, a VMX file. So right here. So VMs are made up of files. And if I go right here. So as you can see, this is the folder of that VM. And this is VMX <coughs> file. And this is VMDK file. As you can see, VMX file is 1KB in size. And basically, this is where all the VM configuration is. So this VM, how much disk is there on this VM? How much CPU is there? How much RAM is there? So basically, this, VM, this VMX file is the configuration file. And VMX file is the same as how we see it in VMware Workstation. So here, this, this, this VM is made up of files. So the first file that it is made up of is known as VMX file. VMX file. And second file, so this is VMX file. And I'm going to say dot VMX file. Guys, files are represented by their extension. So in all the files, we must remember that whenever you have a file ending with these three letters, this is known as file extension. And the first part is known as file name. This is a file name. This is extension. And all files are known by their extensions. So this, as you can see, the file name is same for all of them. But extensions are different. Extensions are different. So VMX means this is a configuration file. So here I'm going to say this is a configuration configuration file. Next one, next one is BMDK. BMDK file is basically the disk of that VM. It is the disk of VM. It is a disk of VM. And VMX F, VMXF, VMXF is additional configuration, if any. 
So this is additional configuration. It is additional configuration. And then come VMSD. VMSD, it is a snapshot file. It is a snapshot file. So whenever you take a snapshot of a VM, it will be saved in VMS, VM, VMSD. VMSD. VMSD is a snapshot file. VMXF is an additional configuration file. But the main two files without which this, this VM doesn't even work is first two files. This file and this file. So now, now these two files, as you can see here, as you can see here, which file is the biggest file? VMDK file. So VMDK file is the biggest file because this is the disk of the VM. So VMDK file will always be a big file. And where is these files and folders stored? They are stored on a VMX volume. So basically, this all, everything is basically stored, I would say, in a, in a data store. So this is known as a data store. Data store one of what? It is a data store one of Canux, ESXi, ESX01. So the disk of this ESXi folder, these all files are stored inside data store one. So if somebody says, go to the, go to the disk of ESXi, all you need to do, go to summary, right click, and then go to data store uh, one, two, or three. So by default, it has only one disk. Now the second thing here is, second thing here is that whenever you create a VM, it creates these files. Other than these files, it has many other files as well. It has many, many other files as well. But these are the most significant files. Meaning, if any VM is not working, it might be that the VMX file is not working. Now let, let's try this out. So here, I'll close the data store. I'll close the data store, and then I'll try to start the VM. I haven't changed anything, but I'll try to start the VM. Let's start the VM. So you select the VM, and then right here, just start it. So in play, you would say connect, and should try to start it. Okay, so this VM is working now. So, everyone, the VM is working. As it says play, it is working. Now, how to see the VM? Guys, in order to see what is in the VM, there are two ways to see the VM running. One is that you can select the VM and go to the console tab. Right on this side, there is a console tab. Now, once you go on to a console tab, in a console tab, it shows you what is in the VM. So at the moment, since there is no operating system, it will give you error message, but at least it's running. It's running. So the console tab, it should show you that it, is, it will load for you. Now, if you don't want to look it into a console tab, what you can do, you can also use this icon. This icon right here. This icon will, will open it outside in a new window. So this one, this icon. This icon will open it in a new window. So all you need to do, just press this. 
and it should open. So here it, it just opens the VM. Now it might it might be a bit slow. It might be a bit slow because uh, the local desk, host desk, or maybe there are too many other things going on. So right here, yes, it, it is exactly like this. There is no DHCP, there is no Pixie environment, there is nothing, and there is no operating system on this it gives you, so at least the VM is running. Now, let's see this. Let's see if the VM is running, what changes does it make in the data store? So let's go back to, let's leave it running. Let's leave it running and go back to our host and summary. It is adding more files, yes. So if I go to host, go to summary and browse data store and go back to this place and now it has added more files here. So there was VMX file, there is there was VMDK file, now there is log file, NVRAM file. So now there are some additional files that it has created. So it also created a log file. Log files to log to log VM activities. And then the NVRAM file. NVRAM file is the RAM that the VM is using, is the memory that VM is using. The memory, the RAM, or memory, <laughs> the VM is using. Then you have VMXF file, VMSD file, uh, there is VMX file, there is LCK file. There is VMX.LCK file. VMX.LCK file is the log file. LCK stands for log. So meaning this VM is running. On any VM, when you see a LCK file, it means VM is running at the moment. Once you shut down the VM, log file will be removed automatically. So this is like VM is running. Just like outside the shops, when you see the shop is open, it's just like that, that, that sign. So log file means that this VM is running and it's locked. Nobody else can connect to it, VM, VM is running. Now, there is uh, one more file, which is, uh, th there are a few other files, but those files are not that important. So here, we need to understand these here. So whenever VM, so when the first time you create a VM, these files were created. And now, when you start the VM, then it, 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 it takes the RAM and starts using it, and that RAM file is NVRAM file. So in your case, it is, it is very small, it is, it is, it is this one. It is this one, LCK. It seems like LDK, but it is LCK. This is LCK file. Then there is log file. Now let's shut down the VM and let's see what happens. So you go back, so we'll, we'll just leave this open here. And then we'll go back to the VM and close it. So right here from the stop, we can stop it or we can right click on this VM so I'm gonna increase my RAM on uh, this vSphere client server LCK is log file is gone, right? Log file simply means that the VM was running. Uh, so here, when you right click here, it shows you can power off, power on, suspend or reset. You can also, in the guest, you can send control alt enter to this, control alt enter for the inside of the VM or control alt delete. And from here, same place, you can install and upgrade VMware tools. Guys, VMware up VMware tools. VMware tools are must for VMs in VMware environment. Are must, not as luxury but necessity. Uh, VMware tools, this part. 
So this part, this VMware tool here, right here, this is a must tool that must go on all VMs. Your VMO, your DRS will not work without VMware tools. Your HA will not work without VMware tools. So you must have, you must know that VMware tools is a necessity in this ESXi environment. Now the next part is snapshot. If you ever need to take a snapshot of this VM, you take it from here. So you, you exactly the way you take it from in VMware Workstation, you take a snapshot and then there is snapshot manager where you can remove snapshots or, or, or you can change snapshot. Other than this, you can open console. Open console is same thing where, where it opens a different console. Then you can edit settings. So same edit settings is what you do in VM. So here you can add more memory, add more CPU and devices and network cards and everything. Now I want you to have a look at, uh, so this is basically the set, set, uh, settings of a VM. Now within this setting, first of all, how, many how much memory that this VM can use? Up to 4 GB, up to 4 GB. And it has only one CPU, it has one video card, it has one uh, uh, VMCI uh, device. We don't need to know this. These are default cases. But here is the CD. Guys, if you ever need to install an operating system now on this VM, exactly the way we do it in VMware Workstation, we can do it right from here. You can go to this location and then browse and provide the ISO. You can provide the ISO to this. We can provide the ISO. But before this, before this, what you need to know, what you need to do is, before what? Okay. Let's let's go through this. <coughs> Guys, today we are we are talking about VM properties. Uh, today we are talking about VM properties. How to work with VMs? Now VM is this guy sitting inside ESXi host, and inside ESXi host, when you create a VM, VM is a collection of files. The first file is VMX file. VMX file is a configuration file. Whereas we have VMDK file, VMDK file is a disk of the VM, and then it has an additional configuration file, then it has a snapshot file, and then you have here the log file, then you have RAM file, and then LCK file. And then there are, other than this, there are some other files that keep on coming back and going, going out. Now, the most two important files are these two files. If these two files are not available for any VM, then your VM cannot start. If VMX file is not available, it won't start. If VMDK file is not available, it won't start. Let's try this out. So all we need to do is this. All we need to do is this. So go back to your disk of your ESXi host. Go back to the disk of ESXi host here. Uh, data store one, browse data store, browse data store and go into this. And uh, this is my VMX file. So let me try to rename it. Let me try to rename it. Just rename it. I'm not deleting it. I'm trying to rename it. So as soon as you try to rename it, the VMX file is renamed and VM is still running. Okay. VM, VM is still running. Now what I'm going to do is, so I just renamed the VMX file. Okay. I just renamed what? The VMX yeah. file. And all I need to do is now test it. That without VMX file, that this VM can start on its own or not. So let's see. So I'm going to stop the VM. So I just selected the VM and press stop. Once it is stopped, now start again. Now when you are trying to start, let's see. It shows error in the events right here. So actually, you know, it started. Is it? Is it started? If completed. So let let me see the data store. Let me see the data store. Maybe it automatically created. Yes, it automatically. No, hold on. Oh no 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 no. It it automatically created another one. Now yeah. since it was running, that's why I think it created. So this time I'm gonna shut it down and then rename the file. So let's shut it down and now, uh, so this file. So rename any file? No, 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 just the VMX file. Just the VMX file. This is a VMX file. 
So in the name, just add any other digit at the end of the file name. What is the purpose to do this? So the main purpose is that without this file, VM cannot start. Oh. Without this file, VM, for example, you want to move this VM from one host to another. So maybe you need to copy the complete folder from one place to another. So maybe VMS file is missing. If VMS file is missing, this VM shouldn't work. Yes. Sorry? Yes. So here, now let me start it again. And this time it gives me an error message. Actually, last time since it was running, it found out that it's not running. It automatically created it based on current configuration. But now it's it. Now, what is my main point here to understand? Guys, the main point here I want you to understand, the main point here, that if you ever need to move a VM from one host to another, and you want to move just the necessary files. So all the, the, the file that you need to move is just VMX and VMDK file. If you have VMX or VMDK file and copy it to any other ESXi host, you can run it. The rest of the file it can create. But, but one more thing. If this VM has a snapshot, if this VM has a snapshot, for now, let's look at our VMSD file. What is in VMSD file? VMSD is a VM snapshot file. So now in order to fix this, how do I fix this? So in order to fix this error. Now here, this is a task manager. It shows you everything what is happening in VMware. It shows you everything that is happening in VMware. This is known as recent task. So here it says it's, it's, it's not working. How do I fix it? I need to go back to the host desk. Uh, no, no, we never created a snapshot. So I need to browse. I need to go inside and I'll rename it back to the original name. So you just rename it back to the original name. It means that it is available. And now let's start it. So keep an eye, always keep an eye on recent tasks, guys, because recent tasks give you the real, real time view of your uh, your ESXi host. Yes. So how does it work with a snapshot? If I create a snapshot and delete VMDK uh, file. How, do you, how does it work? Yes, yes, yes. If you have a snapshot and you revert it back, it will revert back to that point. Yes, it does. It will revert back everything, all settings. No, 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 no. Deleted file, it cannot bring. You shouldn't delete the file. So snapshot, if you take a snapshot, snapshot is a temporary backup. That's where it differs from the backup. Exactly. That's where it differs from the complete backup. In in, in snapshot, it still depends on existing files. Deleted file cannot be back Yes. Backup? Yes. If you have a snapshot, let's say you have a snapshot and you had all these files. Now you took a snapshot. So VMX file, VMDK file, and everything else. Now, if I need to revert back Half an hour back, I can easily, you revert back, it uses same file, but just move the configuration back to that half an hour back. But let's say you deleted one of the files, and now you need to revert back. It won't revert back. Why? Because it depends on these files. It depends on all of these files. Um, I'm asking, let's say they were um, that virtual machine, not the system file, if there was a data file, any application. Not the system file that is required for the VM, any other data file. Hold on. So snapshot, yeah. snapshot when we take, snapshot is taken actually for this folder. This folder. We're not talking about snapshot inside a VM. So if you're talking about inside a VM. Let's say inside a Windows, inside this VM, there is a Windows folder and you delete some files. Inside, that will be reverted back. Yeah. That will work. That will work. So anything you delete inside the windows, when you revert back, it will come back. But uh, we are talking about if anything is deleted from these files, yeah, and then you revert file back, file. it won't. It won't. It will, come back. it will come back. It will come back only only the files that are deleted inside inside the VM. But it, let's say you took a snapshot and you deleted the disk file. The disk file is not there. Then snapshot won't revert it back. Because snapshot file, which is this file, VMSD file, it depends on this file. 
Yes, I am talking about the operating system that is inside. Inside. If you delete anything inside the VM, then it can it can be reverted back. For that, the host snapshot has to be one, right? Huh? For that, for those files, we have to you have to have a snapshot. Yes. So one more time. One more time. All we need to do, we are understanding a snapshot. Snapshot. So what is a snapshot, guys? Snapshot is a is a uh, you can say it's a point in time backup. It's a point in time, just like we use a snapshot every day in our VMware workstation, right? So you created a VM, and I want to take a snapshot at at at, at 8 p.m. and you took a snapshot. Now here at 8:30 p.m. now you have a different. So here your mouse was here, and now your mouse is here. You revert back to this position. Now your mouse mouse again comes back here. This is just a quick example of a snapshot. We know as a snapshot that you can have a snapshot and you can come back to the snapshot. But I'll come back to your question. Now, what, what Atif was asking that let's say you took a snapshot and here it had inside it has 10 files. And now here some files were deleted, now it has five files. So his question was when you revert back, can it still get 10 files inside or it will be just five files? So the answer to this is what do you think? It will be 10 files. It will be 10 files because if you revert back, it will bring back the 10 files. So this is part of. Now, as compared to what we discussed, this is a VM and it has a VMX file. It has a VMDK file. So from outside, it is like this. It has a v, uh, VMSD file and all these other files. Now, you took a backup and when you, after at 8.30, what happened was VMX file was deleted. But you still have VMDK file and VM. So now my question to you is, can you still revert back? No. Now you cannot revert back. Because for snapshot to work properly, these VM files are required. So now, going back to his question, if file is deleted inside the windows, it can be revert back. But if the file that makes up the VM is deleted, you cannot revert back. Because snapshot needs these files. It means this snapshot is not for these files. It is uh, just as a snapshot we are taking before. Exactly. So it, is just it, it is for the VM. It is for the whole uh, inside the VM. Yes. It is not, not for, for the files. outside. Not for the outside. Not same for like VMware works. Same like exactly same like VMware works. What's the outside and what's inside? Like as I understand, <coughs> like these files are responsible for the, like storing making the, the VM, making a VM and, and storing, storing the snapshot. snapshot. And inside files are Windows file. C drive, D drive, whatever is inside the windows. So those files. So these files are outside of the windows? These are outside, these are inside. Okay. That is like yes. VMware made of. Exactly. This is what the VM is made up of. This is where the operating system is installed inside. This is the inside operating system. Just like uh, when um, I was doing that, we were creating the VM and C and C was almost the Exactly. You transfer your VM to D drive. So you take the complete folder and move it. And then you go to the VM and just click on the VMX file and the VMX Exactly. File. Yes. What is your question? In, in the production environment, when you are working the snapshot, it's a good practice to use snapshot or do you like take the snapshots when you are working? Good question, guys. In real environment, how do we take these snapshots? Guys, in real environment, we don't take snapshots. Actually, there is a soft backup software that keeps on taking snapshots automatically. So we don't take snapshot on regular basis. Ideally, the, the snapshot uh, should take the front end and the back end. You know, these files are things. Because if we are reverting back, it should revert back to both whatever was the system, whatever was that. Exactly. Ideally. Ideal. But, but if it doesn't, then it's a not that much problem. No. Yes. Yeah. For that reason, for that reason, snapshot is never considered a complete backup. So do not rely on, in, in real environment, this is what we know, that snapshot is not a perfect backup. Why? Because if any real file is missing, snapshot is dead. So for that, we take extra backups. For that, we take extra backups. So it is, it is, a, known, it is a known statement in VMware world, do not rely on just snapshots, take real backups. Okay. So now guys, going back here, so these are VMs, these are files, and now uh, what we know is, we know these, these places here. So inside a ESXi host, so this is what we know at the moment. 
So what we know is, we know that ESXi environment So here, we started with uh, VMware, VMware, and then we made uh, 2000, uh, Windows 2008 server. We did make 2008 server. Inside that, we installed the vSphere client, vSphere client, and then we created ESXi host, ESXi host, and then uh, what we did, we installed, uh, we connected we connected from vSphere client to ESXi host, and this is working. This is working. And we do understand the difference between ESX and ESXi. We do. ESX and ESXi. What is ESX? Older technology. ESX was completely obsolete at which version? 4.5. From 5, they completely started ESXi version. So here we did this. And now we were trying to understand ESXi functioning. So in ESXi functioning, uh, we know that when you connect here, when you connect to ESXi host, you can create VMs inside. So we created VM. We can create VMs. We can create VMs. And then we can, we can actually, we can create, edit, delete VMs. And then we, inside ESXi host, we also saw a data store. Now, what is the data store refers to? The disk of ESXi host. Here is the disk of ESXi. Data store, it refers to a disk of ESXi host. And then we, uh, so we, we saw the VM files. VM files. In VM files, we should have a very good understanding at least of VMX file and VMDK file. Other file you don't remember, it's fine. But VMDK files, so VM files are VM is made up of VMX, it is made up of uh, VMDK, it is made up of uh, VM, uh, VMSD, which is a snapshot file, and so on. Uh, and then, and then now, and we also know that the file system, file system of ESXi host. What is the file system of ESXi host? VMFS. It is VMFS. File system of ESXi host is VMFS, VMFS, which is VMware file system. VMware file system. Um, sorry, virtual machine file system. VMFS stands for virtual machine file system. Yes, yes, exactly. That's why they call it VMware. Just like software, just like hardware. So VMware. So here, virtual machine file system. And uh, so file system, ESXi, this is what we already know. Now, right here, now we need to dive into understanding what is, uh, how to use e ESX, uh, how to use vSphere client. So here, uh, now we need to understand how to use vSphere line. What is one what is one liner for uh, VMFS? What is one liner for? It is designed for high performance file system. A large file. It is designed for large file and please remember this. So VMFS it is designed For large file. Large file. Now, guys, let's look at vSphere client here. So, this is my vSphere client. Now, in vSphere client, it is divided into four areas. It is divided into four areas. There is a menu area, there is a, uh, there is a host area, which is this one, and there is a detailed property areas, which is this, and there is a recent task here. Now, recent task is the place, so it has these different areas here. So, here, ESXi host divided into menu. So, this is menu. And this one is here, the host area. Okay, let's call it host. 
host and VM area. And this one is uh, detail properties. And right here, it is recent task. Now, recent task is that area where it gives you real time tasks. So, this, this is area. In recent task, it's a real time shows, recent shows, real so time. What it is with this screen, which is very right here. Yes. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, it, exactly. This one is exactly this thing. Here, this side, it will show you the host, which host you are connected to, which VM are you connected to. So this is host or VM area, host and VM area, host and VM. So here it shows you I am connected to 168 and 100.50, 100.50. And then on the top, it's the menu area, it's the menu area, where you have right at the top, you have file, file, edit. View, administration, inventory, and administration. It is right there. And then it has something called plugin as well. Plugin and help. And right under this, it has an address bar. It has buttons. Home, inventory, I'm just writing from there, if it is not visible, I'm just writing it from there, and then inventory. And then the most important part that we need to understand is the detailed property area. In detailed property area, this is here it shows you all the tabs here. So there is getting started tab getting started tab and then next one is summary tab and the next one is VM tab next one is resource allocation next one is performance next one is configuration and so on now let, let's look at this one by one so first of all this is just a recent task here you see the task working or failed running or failed now, right here, we saw a few minutes back, the task was failed. Now, you always keep an eye on this, because, guys, when, when there are hundreds of VMs sitting on this one host, how many VMs? I can't hear everyone. Hundreds of VMs. If there are hundreds of VMs, you will see hundreds of tasks here as well. Most of the time, we are, we, are, we are concerned with how many errors are there, which task failed. Vmotion failed, HA failed, DRS failed, everything you will see right here. And the next thing here is, this is where this is the area where it shows you everything that you can do with multiple places. Now let's go to the home screen. Everyone go to home screen. Now everything starts from a home screen. When you are connected from vSphere client to ESXi host, I want you to have a very good look at this. It gives you only three icons. One is inventory. Inventory means that this ESXi host where you're connected, how many hosts are there, how many VMs are there. That's the inventory of your ESXi environment. And so again, go back to home. So meaning every time when you are interested to see your host inside vSphere client, you always need to look at this icon. You always need to look at this icon. And this icon is three twin servers. Three twin servers, right? Now, in vSphere client, it is known as inventory. In, uh, in, in, e in vCenter, you will find the same icon and it's named as hosts and clusters. But here, I just want you to remember that this is the place where we start from. Your most of the time will be spent here. Now, here in this roles, let's go into roles. In roles, you will see that role has the people who have access to the CSXI host. So no access, there is nothing. Read only, there is nothing. And in administrator, if you go, then there is there, there are these people who have full access to this. And there are three people. One is root account with which we are logged in. One is DCUI and one is VPX user. Now let's understand these. So uh, now we are, so first of all, go back, go back, go back, go back. 
So let's go to home. Now from home screen, uh, from home screen, it has two tabs. It has two major tabs, which is number one, inventory, and second one is administration. So number one is I can't I can't hear you. Number one is inventory. 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 Who saying administration? I said uh, number one is. So number one is inventory. inventory. No, is this the best you can do, guys? Is this the best we can do? Number one is inventory. inventory. Number two is administration. administration. So this one is inventory. Guys, please, 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 sit straight. Everyone, sit straight. Everyone, don't be too comfortable. Don't be too comfortable. You're very comfortable. Your complete tummy is out, and then you're inside the chair. So like like myself. So maybe bring bring that tummy inside. You know, I have I have like this, but it's inside. I mean, keep it inside. I mean, then you can have ha have a habit of this. <laughs> it's not a sans rokna thing, guys. The thing is, because we cannot control it. Fat, fat. We do eat fats, and it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. So you have to have it like this. So guys, here. I said, do not relax, uh, Khubab. Khubab, you're almost inside the chair. <laughs> and uh, sit straight, sit straight, sit straight. Because pretending to sleep is almost sleeping. Pretending to sleep is almost sleeping. Don't sleep. Okay, so here, it's very important. I know it's very simple for all of you, but it's very important. So right here, first one is? Second one is? Administration. So two tabs are there. In V Center, there will be four tabs. There will be four tabs. So first one is inventory, inventory, and inventory. There is first icon is this, and then administration. Now in administration, this is the place where all the users have who have access to. Let's say here in no access, there is no user added. In read only, there is no user. But here in administration, there are three users. So first of all, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that in home screen, write it down. In home screen, there are three, there are two tabs. In under home, there is inventory. And under inventory, there are these three servers. So we're going to come back to inventory, and that is known as inventory. And second tab is known as administration. Uh, and in administration, there is one tab that is known as roles. And second is logs. So log is very simple. Log is very simple. Log is where all the logs are. Role is where the, pe who, the people who have access to. So this is where people with access. People, or I would say users access. And in role, there are three roles inside. The three roles are no access, read only, and administrator. We need to remember how many roles are there. So there are three roles under this. So three roles are number one, no access, and number two, read only, number three, administrator. Under administrator, there are three users there. Guys, under no access, there are no users. Did you see any user under no access? No. So, and then, is there, are there any user under read only? No. no, there is nothing. So these are empty. We can add people there. We can add people there. We can add people here. Read only. Read only will be those people who have only view access to this, whereas or no access meaning no access. In Citrix, we had almost similar type of access. In Citrix, it was, it was, uh, no access, V only access, and sorry, it was V only administration and custom in Citrix. There were three types of it. Here it has three types of access, no, no access, read only, and administrator. Guys, in administrator, there are three. Administrator, there are three. So right here, administrator number one, root has full access, root, which has full access, and number two, DC, UI, and number three, VPX user. VPX user. Now, root account is the only one that is interactive account. Root account is the only one that is interactive. So root account is the one that is interactive account. This is inter interactive account. Yes. There are three administrators. There are three administrators. Yes, yes, you can. They all have administration. So whoever is sitting under administration, they all have full administration right. So guys, here, 
root full access it is interactive. What is the meaning of interactive? Interactive means with root account you can log in and log out. Meaning DCUI you cannot log in and log out. Although this has full access but you cannot log in and log out. With VPX same thing. These are both service accounts. So I would say these are both service accounts. So what's the Yes, so, so so let's look at it. DCUI. DCUI We're going to go for a bit and one night. Okay, let's start. Three users have administrator access. Three users. In which only with one user I can log in and log out. So this is why we use root account to log in and log out. So when you when the first time you logged in here, you used a root account. When you logged in here, it asks you for a root account. Let's say press F12. It is asking you root account. Basically, with this, this is this is called interactive login. Whereas these two are used by these two are used by ESXi host and vSphere client. Whenever vSphere client needs to connect to ESXi host, basically when this connects from here to here, it is using an account called VPX account, VPX user. So from now on, any time when somebody asks you, how is this connected here, guys, they are connected here through VPX user account. Where we are right now connecting from, this is, this is, this is an agent account. This is agent account, just like we have SCCM client, when you have SCCM client and that is working. So you can say VPX is the agent that works between here and here. So with v, v, so here, this is VPX is this agent sitting here. This is a VPX. In Citrix, it is known as receiver on Citrix servers. You can manage from there. In VMware, this is VPX. VPX is actually your v if VPX dies on ESXi host, if VPX dies on ESXi host, then this connection will fail. So basically, VPX user is basically the agent between vSphere client and ESXi host. So this is that, that user. And DCUI, I'll come back to your question. DCUI is every time when you open this here. This is a DCUI. When every time when you directly log in here, you use root account, but basically you're using DCUI. DCUI stands for direct, uh, DCUI stands for 
a direct console user interface. I think it is console. See, can you quickly Google? Uh, just say vSphere 5.5 DC UI. Yes. Uh -huh. Except on ESXi, all the ESXi hosts on all the ESXi hosts. It is on all ESXi hosts. Because, uh, guys, the question here is, so I said VPX is actually the agent that works between, it is the agent, VPX is basically an agent that works between this client and here. And, and in reality, actually, it works between vSphere client and this. So on the client, when you install v, vSphere client, basically, this can connect to VPX. So on server has VPX, and this one has vSphere client. Exactly, exactly. So guys, here, yeah, DCUI, I think it is direct console user, user interface. interface. OK, direct console user interface. So this is direct console user interface. Whenever you directly log into ESXi host, this, this account is used. Although you logged in with root account, but this account will still be used, direct account. So this is for direct console user interface. And this one is the agent that works so by VPX. Whenever in VMware environment, whoever is asking for what is the agent that works between vSphere client and ESXi host or between vCenter and ESXi host, it is always VPX. VPX is that, that, that client that works between them. So this is why they are sitting in administration. Now, for example, if by any chance you delete this account, if you uh, delete this account, basically you will lose the connection between vSphere client and ESXi host. For that reason, never ever touch these accounts and leave them automatically managed by ESXi host. Somehow that happens. So if somehow that happens, you'll have to rebuild. Uh, you, you'll have to rebuild. Re, I mean, uh, I, I'm not hundred percent sure. I've never seen it going down. Uh, but but if this happens, I'm sure there might be some step by step to fix it. Huh? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it might be. Maybe it might be. Uh, but basically, these are both system managed. They are both system managed. The only account that we are concerned with is root account. Okay. DCUI is a direct console user interface. And basically, whenever you directly log into, log on to a ESXi host, DCUI is used. Whenever you directly log into this, DCUI is used. And whenever you script something for ESXi host, this is used. So in scripting, it is used. It is used here as well. Okay, so here, so three administrators are there by default. Now going back to our vSphere client here, going back to vSphere client, and within this, let's go back to home. So here we do understand now what roles are. So roles and then system logs are here, and this is exactly what's happening in your machine at, at this point. So this is detailed logging. This is detailed logging. So, so it's a, uh, it gives you a lot of information here. If you ever need to go into detailed logging, and plus, you can also uh, you can also see some server logs, some vCenter logs, some other logs as well. At the moment, so most of the time, guys, we see everything here in recent tasks. This will be logged in detail inside logs. So most of the time, we go here. If you need to go deep down in troubleshooting, then you look at these logs. But these logs are not give you full details. This is also give you some basic details. This is also giving you some basic details, not full details. Okay, now going back to home and go back to inventory. Within inventory, it shows you ESXi host, then it shows you VM. And in ESXi host, now let's concentrate. So, so from home, uh, home gives you right here, this screen actually gives you an easy view to go from here to here. You can, you can select a host and the, on the host, what can you do? You can create a new VM, you can create a resource pool, you can put it in maintenance mode. This we all discuss in, in, in vCenter for now, don't worry about this. But at this point, uh, just look at this. So host, inventory and host. If you ever need to reboot a host right from here, you can initiate this here. You can reboot it from the ESXi host as well, but you can also do it from here. Let, let's reboot it. Let's reboot it and see what happens. So actually, don't reboot. Let's re uh, shut down. So if you shut down a host, it says, do you really want to shut down ESX1? Yes, we can. So yes, and then here you can give a reason. This reason is for logging purposes. Now, why are you shutting it down? 
why are you shutting it down? Is it for known reason? Is it for accidental? So here you can say testing purposes. Testing. So just for testing and then click OK. As soon as you click OK, now look at your ESXi host here. So first of all, here you see that here it says auto shutdown off is completed. Initiate host is completed. And now on host, you see that it should go down. And it's not going down. It is not going down. Is it going down? No. Really? That is not good. Really? It should. Okay, let's log in and see. So F2. No, it's going down. It's going down. Yes, and it is it is it is restart. It is shut down. So it was a bit slow, but it shut down. Yes. It was a bit slow, but it shut down. So and here it says connection and loss because it is shut down. Now from here you cannot restart it. You must be on a machine to restart it. So here you go, either you go physically on that server and restart, so or you just uh, initiate restart. So now it is starting back up. Once it comes back, it should be automatically connected. Uh, yes, why not restart it? But if it is shut down, then you cannot restart it. In order to restart, somebody has to go there and pull the and and, and press uh, the power on. Okay. Now, sir, uh, these three SSI host machines can be in the different physical locations. Oh yes, yes, most of the time they are in yeah. different locations. Data center. Yes, and in data center there are some people who you can call them, who you can call them and tell them, you know what, go to rack number fifty and server number two. Just go and push the power button. Okay. So guys, here. So look at this. Look at this. You are sitting in the headquarter here. Let's say this is your company's headquarters, and uh, let's say it is Rogers. Rogers, and you are sitting here within your office, and you have a laptop. You're managing an environment that is in a data center, and Rogers data center is one of them is Black Iron. Black Iron is a huge big data center from Rogers. So they are all servers are sitting here. So they are all servers are sitting in racks. <coughs> And their servers are right here. Guys, this is a very important point that I'm going to explain here. So, now, first of all, you should never shut down a server. First of all, never shut down a server. Even if you do, just restart it or reboot it so that it comes back. But let's see if it is shut down. Now, the big question is, now the big question is, big question is, how do you bring it back if it is shut down? If a machine is shut down, the only way to bring it back, let's say I shut down your machine, the only way is that I would ask you and you need to you need to push the power button and start it. So so two ways to restart a machine or two ways to start a machine. One way is so start a, how to start a machine. Guys, here I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a very, very important point about real data centers. So starting can be done in two ways. It is on site or off site. On site means that somebody has to be here and know the rack location and would go to the rack location here and then restart for push the power button. This is power button on that. So they have to give you a help. And sometimes we do this. Sometimes you would call the person sitting in the in the data center, tell him that my server is down, can you please go and restart the server? Just pull the power, uh, uh, press the power, so this person will do This is one way of doing it. This is known as on-site. So you need to contact the on-site person. But guys, most of the time, this is not how we do it. Most of the time, we would restart it remotely from off-site. Off-site means I need to restart it right from here. Somehow, I need to connect to the server and restart now, the biggest problem in this is, what is the biggest problem? 
the biggest problem in this is the biggest problem in this is uh, that this server is shut down. How do you connect to it? It is completely shut down, right? Because if the server is shut down, you can't do anything. Somebody has to go there and do it. So guys, now I'm going to give you that point here. The point here is that all of these racks, they have something called right here in each rack, they have something called KVMs in them. Yes, KVM. KVM. They all have something called KVM. So they have something called KVM here in each rack. In each rack, there is a KVM. So in order to start the server, you must connect to the KVM right here. And from KVM, you can connect to the server and then power it on. What does KVM stand for? Huh? No. It is, uh, I mean, what does KVM stand for? Keyboard? Keyboard video mouse. It's very simple. Keyboard video mouse. Yes, one monitor and a keyboard. Exactly. Exactly, yes. So for now, without going into detail, I just want to let you know that if you ever, if this server is shut down, first of all, do not shut down the machine. If it is shut down, then you have two ways. One is that if you have the call center contact person, because there are some people sitting on call center, you always have their numbers. You will call them, tell them, uh, go to rack number 200, because there are hundreds of racks there. You need to give them the location, server name. They need to go there and, and start. And you need to give them the right location. Why? Because if you give them wrong location, then they might shut down a running server, another running server. So uh, you need to give them. So this is one way. If this is not available, let's say it's 2 a.m. at night, and you cannot get them over the phone, the call center people, then you so our best shot is, before even calling them, we connect to the KVM directly. And we have all these numbers. Now, your question is, how do we know the KVM of all these switches? Guys, you all will be given a list of KVM and their credential, administrative passwords. So you, you will be provided that, that in order to connect to these server, this is a KVM IP address and the username and password. So it will give you the IP address of KVM. And then and password. Uh, you can uh, somehow refer to this because you're doing it remotely. Yes, you can refer to it. But here I want you to remember because for, for all of you, it's a new word. Just write it down. KVM stands for KVM stands for keyboard, video, and mouse. It is, um, so KVM here, KVM. KVM is used to connect, KVM is used to connect to remote racks, remote racks. So I'm using the word rack. You're not connecting directly to the server. You're connecting to actually the rack. And what is rack? Rack is, rack is exactly like this. Each rack had one KVM or two KVMs, uh, one KVM, mostly one KVM. So here, it's a, uh, let's say, rack. Data center. KVM. I know, yes. How come? What? No, what are you referring to? I mean, uh, how? Yes, yes, yes. KVM you can buy for even smaller amount as well. So this is something like this. This is this is a rack here, and then this is a KVM interface. So with, with this KVM, you can actually control all these servers inside a rack. So basically here, so this is a rack. This is a rack with a lot of servers, and you can connect to KVM right from here. And, uh, and let's look at this. KVM does something like, like this, exactly. 
So here you open a keyboard and mouse and you can connect to all the servers in this rack. So basically with one monitor and mouse, you're connecting to eight servers inside. So when, if ever your server is down, then you can connect from outside of that machine just through a KVM. So interview question is that if your server is down, how do you restart that server? Then your first answer is I will try to connect to KVM and from KVM I'll try to restart the server. If KVM is not available, then what? Then you can say, okay, I'm going to reach out to someone's data center and ask them to just restart the server. Or if somebody is not even in data center, then your only shot is that you go and drive to that data center and do it yourself. Huh? Uh, with KVM, mostly it is just to connect to the servers remotely. That's it. Yes, so it is actually KVM is a website. So your question is, how do we connect to a KVM? How do we connect to a KVM? And in order to connect to a KVM, guys, it's like, have you ever connected to a vSphere website, uh, Citrix website? Yes. How do you connect to Citrix website? You need to have that link, right? Uh, how do you connect to Gmail? You need to have a link. So for KVM, there is a link as well. <laughs> this link will be given to you. So you don't need to remember that link. So we, we will have an Excel sheet with all the links. So connect to a particular server, you connect to that link and that link will ask you username and password and that you already have. So once you use a username and password, you connect to it remotely and then you can see your server, just power it on. So with this idea, we cannot turn on a server because shut down. We can. With KVM, with KVM, we can restart a server that is completely shut down. Uh, so yes, that is one option, but if you don't want to go there, you can connect to this KVM and then start the server. For restart, it can be for him to You can restart, but what if it is power shut down? down? If it is shut down, then, then you must either to use this to or go there and do it. So to... How is <laughs> yes, so that's the big question. How does the KVM do this? And it will only do the one which is shut down, otherwise it will... No, no, no. So KVM. So guys, now the next. So do we understand KVM now? Yes, KVM is kind of, KVM is kind of that console from where you can connect. Exactly. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Huh? No, 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 no. KVM is mostly for servers. Just a second, I'll, I'll show you what it is. Let me give you a, a simplest KVM. Yes, it's right here. <clears throat> Guys, look at this. Now this is this is one KVM. This is a this is this is how KVM's interface looks like. So let's look at this. First of all, let's say uh, one of my server went down. One of the ESXi host went down. So First information, first uh, first uh, understanding is all the ESXi hosts are physical servers. Because why should the ESXi hosts should be physical server? Because you need to install VMs inside, right? So this is a physical server. And all ESXi hosts are physical server. So this is the rack where all of the servers are. So let's say server 1, 2, so for now they are empty, but here there are servers here. So server 1, 2, 3, 4. Now all these servers are connected to a KVM and you see this interface, this is a laptop, right? This is a laptop. And in this laptop, actually you're connecting to a website of one of the KVM. So this is how it looks like. And within this KVM, as soon as you connect to this website, this website for this KVM, so KVM is on the rack. It is on where? 
It yeah. is on the rack. You connect to the link and it connects to this website. And in this website, first of all, it shows you the image of the rack. It has the image of the rack. And then you can connect either on directly on the server, it will connect you to that server. So in the background, this KVM is connected to each server in the rack. So basically it is exactly like, it is exactly like when you have a switch and I connect all these computers to a switch. So the switch has 24 ports, I can connect 24 ports here, right? So KVM has eight ports or sometimes 12 ports or some bigger KVMs as well. But mostly it will be eight or 12 ports. So eight servers are connected to this. Now your question is how it is. So how, how, how does a KVM looks like? Guys, KVM looks like just like a switch. It's like a switch kind of a device. No. It's like a switch kind of a device here. Let me show you. Uh, it, it is, this, this is KVM. So this is a KVM. Here you see with this KVM, how many computers can connect? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 servers can connect to this one KVM. So first of all, KVM is just like a switch kind of a device where you can connect 16 servers and the, then just connect to this device and then it will show you the server from outside. So this is how. So if you really want to restart one server, you're just working on one server. One server at a time. <coughs> no, no, they, they are they are all in data center. Most of the time they are not on site. If it is a small company, then it is on one site. But most of the time they are sitting in data centers. Yes. Question? KVM. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. So KVM has full control of all these servers. In order to control a server, all you need to do, connect to the KVM. And then you can see all the servers, you can shut them down, restart it, do, do anything. Exactly. For KVM, all the servers inside are connected to switch. They have a physical button, but now not anymore. All KVMs are automatic. Okay, so guys, this is, so here we started with here, ESXi, host that we under, understood this and this and that. And let's jump back to our ESXi. We just finished the Microsoft Azure exam. So yesterday he came to me, Mushtaq from track five, and he said that, you know what, I have one voucher left, what should I do? And I said, okay, go for Azure. He just finished it. Okay. He's saying that this is the easiest one to go for, and you can just go through just these, uh, those uh, 60, 70 questions, and you can clear it. And Azure is a good exam to pass, because this is a cloud technology. If you have a voucher, you can just prepare it in two, two, three hours and go for it more. What, what code is it is, uh, and here it's, he's sending, actually, you know, he's now voucher expert. So it is 70-533. Uh, Okay. okay, so now let's connect back to because we restarted our ESXi host. Let's connect to ESXi host now. So you're connecting back. Uh, we'll ignore the certificate and connect. And just before going to a, going for a break, we'll go for a quick break. But before going for a break, let's let's I want to I want you to see one more thing in ESXi, and then right after the break, we'll start our first vCenter. Ta-da! Okay, so it is connecting, and here uh, I'm going to say connected, so done. Now, this is my ESXi inter, this is my vSphere interface. So here, right here, it is getting started. Uh, this is just gives you just some basic definition of how, uh, what is ESXi host, and how does it work. Let's look at this. 
and right here within summary so you can you can keep on navigating with me wherever i'm going inside esxi host so it is showing you the summary within summary it shows you this information we have already been, went through this but if you ever need to see a real time health of a esxi host all you need to do is you need to look at this place you need to look at how much cpu is used and how much memory is used so if this memory is high the cpu is high meaning that you might need to add more cpu this blue represents that it has it has this much of memory use and this much is left okay and then this is this is your my computer for ESXi host. You need to see that the, the disk is here. And then this is the network where you're connected to. This is the network where you're connected to. In VMware Workstation, we connect to either NAT network, we connect to host only, we can do a bridge as well, right? So here we are connected to VM network, which is a standard port switch. So this is your network. Now let's move to the next one. So we are this we are in host number one. What is the IP address of host number one? 192.168.101.50 and then now we need to see how many VMs are in this host. We can see it from here or we can also see it from the VM tab. So here it shows me this VM. There is only one VM and it is powered off. Provision space is 44. Used space is only uh, 304 KB. This is because it does not have any operating system. That's why it's using this one. How much CPU are in use? How much memory is in use? This is 00. zero. Why? Because this VM is off. Let's turn it on. Let's turn it on. So just select the VM and turn it on. Now, guys, what I'm showing you, it is very, very important because this is how you need to read your ESXi environment. Uh, if you don't know how to read your ESXi environment, you'll be lost everywhere in, in a lot of clicks here. So here, let's go back to the host and go to VM. And here, now it says that the used memory is 4 GB. 4 GB means when it was shut down, it was only using 3, 304 KB. And now when it is working, it, it, it already took 4 GB uh, disk space. And that is even without, that is even without the operating system. Now next is resource allocation. Resource allocation, basically this is for performance monitoring that how much CPU was used and how much memory was used. So basically this is the place where it says total capacity is this, reserve capacity is zero and, and available capacity is this. This is just giving you uh, overall statistics. And this says basically we there is a full chapter on understanding resource management and we'll do it in, uh, in, uh, in that chapter. But for now, just, just this is to go in more detail about CPU. If, you, if I need to see a basic detail of CPU, where do I need to go? It is just you need to go to summary and this is basic CPU and memory information. This is basic CPU and memory information. For detailed view, you can go to resource allocation. Okay. And next one is performance. Performance, it is just showing you how, how your ESXi host is doing. How your ESXi host is doing. So this is basically the graph that we see in task manager in, in, in task manager in Windows. So this is a performance task and it is going on. Guys, the next most important part of ESXi host management is configuration. In configuration, in other words, this configuration tab is like a control panel of your Windows. So it is a control panel, it is a control panel of your Windows. So control, what can we do in Windows control panel? We can do everything. We can add program, remove program, add hardware. We can do everything, change display settings. So basically, configuration is the control panel of ESXi host. Basically, here, you it gives you everything here. So first of all, health status. In health status, if you scroll down, it's saying that everything is normal. Your processors are normal. Your software components are normal. If there are any issues, then it would show you what are the issues here. But for now, it seems like everything and all the services and everything is normal on this server. So this is overall health. Next one is how much CPU is running. Next one is how much CPU is running. So this is, it's saying that it has one CPU, which is i7-2720. This is my CPU. And you will get your host according to your host CPU. What is your CPU model in this? i7-2760. And yours? OK. So and then, then how many sockets? It is using two sockets, one core, one logical CPU, 
and then the manufacturer is VMware, so it gives you more details about a CPU. Now, one more time, all we need to do is we can go to host, and then we can go to configuration, and then we can go to processor, and then next one is memory. It shows you that how much memory is in use. So there was the basic view of the memory, basic view. Summary. In summary, you can see that in summary, but if you need to go in more detail, you can go into configuration and see it in, in, in numbers as well. Actually, the same numbers are displayed in summary as well. Now, this is the place where it shows you the disks connected to ESXi host. So this is data store 1. It is total capacity is this, 3 is 31, and it is of type VMFS 5. So VMFS came in many different versions, and this version is 5. Okay, so this is version 5, and last updated at this point. And then here, if you need to add more disk, have you ever added a disk in Windows Server? Yes. How do you add a disk in Windows Server? Server. You go to VM setting and then add, add disk. So after adding a disk, does it work automatically? No. You have to go to the storage and then enable, initiate it and, and then activate it and format it. Right? So same thing for here. Now what we are going to do, we are going to add a disk here. So from the ESXi host. Yes. On, I need to add a disk on ESXi host. So very good, good understanding. Guys, if I need to add a disk here, if I need, so let's say, uh, this data store one is not enough for me. I need to add an extra disk. How do you add an extra disk? In order to add an extra disk, this is what we need to do. We can go into vSphere here. We can go here and add a disk. So for all of you, you are saying that this is not the right way of doing it, yes or no? Yeah. Uh, is this the right way of doing it? No. Are you sure, Akubab? Right it is, it is a right timing, wrong place. Or wrong timing, wrong person. <coughs> it's, a, it's a filmy dialogue. Okay, so what do you, you guys think? Is this a right place to add a disk? No? Are you 100% sure? And you? In the VM. Huh? Yes. And... Yes. Yes, it is it is yes, I know you're saying no, this is a wrong place. And what about you guys? I am right that this is a wrong place. Okay. Why is it a wrong place? Anyone? This is the wrong place, yeah. guys, because I'm about to add a disk in VC, not in ESXi host. Yeah. Whereas I need to add a data store. So for that, I need to go into ESXi. Guys, everybody add a new disk. So everybody add a new disk. Now, there are few steps here, guys. It won't be easy. It won't be easy. It's a bit difficult. There are few steps here. So now let's understand. Right click on ESXi host and then go to settings. And then within, is this a, within the settings of ESXi host, so you need to go to right click. Are you there, Atif? Yeah. Okay, and then add, click add, and add a disk. So here I'm going to say add a disk. What do you want to add? I want to add a hard disk. And then you add, and next, and next. So nothing, you don't have to select anything special. Just go with everything, next, 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 and done. So now I've added a second disk. I added a second disk. Once this is added, now you don't have to do anything in here. Nothing here. Now you need to go back to VC. What happened? What happened? You know how to do it? You did it. Bravo. Uh, and you did it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Was there a video on this? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Good. Guys, please, please do the videos before coming to this lecture. Please. Oh, uh, are you guys doing the videos in advance? <laughs> you are? Okay. What I mean by this, guys, what I mean by this, are we are we adding a disk? Are we adding a disk? Okay, so the next thing <coughs> next thing is this guys here. So once you add a disk, the disk won't automatically appear in this section. All you need to do is, you need to say add storage. 
यू हैव टू रीस कैन यार यू मैं नहीं खेलता यार आप लोगों से आप लोगों से मैं नहीं खेलता आप लोगों ने पहले कर लिया यार मैं क्या करूं यार ये फिर आप मुझे कहते हैं कि मुझे वो बंदा मिल गया था सारा कुछ आता है आपको यार सारा कुछ आता है नो नो माशाल्लाह यू यू डूइंग गुड ओके हियर गाइस हियर दिस इज व्हाट वी नीड टू डू सो स्टेप नंबर 1 वाज गो टू द ईएसएक्सआई होस्ट एंड ऐड अ डिस्क स्टेप नंबर 2 इज एंड देयर इज अ वीडियो इफ यू मिस अ स्टेप गाइस देयर इज अ वीडियो ऑन दिस and i want you to do it on all esxi host just to have just to have and it's only one time once you do it you will remember it just one time you do it so here all you need to do you need to do a rescan all so right here so you need to go here guys in esxi host within configuration there are two things related to storage one is storage second thing is storage adapter so before going to the storage you need to go to storage adapter storage adapter and just say rescan all once you rescan all it will rescan the disk and it won't do anything and then all you need to do is so it doesn't show me the disk what do you have to do have to click and no, no not this not this so yes now you need to go back to storage and say add storage once you add storage then go to disk and then go to next and here it shows you a new disk so just three steps here on vm add this second is we are client go to configuration and then go to storage adapter actually not storage adapter within the same storage you need to just rescan it rescan all and after that add storage once you add storage it will start a wizard and select the disk so now here is it is it working in your machine here okay so quickly add another disk if you know how to do it just add another disk guys now right here it's saying that which vmfs uh, version you want to use so do you want to use vmfs 5 or 3 3 is older version and 5 is the latest version and now there is 6 in vmfs 6 okay so here just 5 and just go with this next and done and we need to name it and this one we're going to name it iso we're going to name it iso yes no the second one as if you're creating a second one you can rename that one so i'm doing the second one third one just name it iso images iso ds01 ds0 actually this is ds02 so i'm just saying that this data store is number 2 and it is for my iso so all my isos i'm going to keep here in this all the isos i'm going to keep in my data store too okay so i'm just naming it iso and then next and then next and then next done so in few seconds now you have a second disk added to a esxi host so all our isos we're going to we're going to keep them here and then now go back to summary and just verify this so now in my summary in my data store i can see both disk and i can right click on this disk and browse storage so i have this second disk available now so size would be the default so huh size this size just leave default everything leave default everything if you should this right just right click and delete the first not the first one <laughs> if you delete the first one i just need to choose okay i just want one is okay okay just five just i mean leave we need two we need two extra 
Okay, so once this is done, so here is your storage. Hmm? Uh, for actually, we need ISO disk on all ESXi hosts. Okay, so just add ISO disk in all of them, in all ESXi hosts. Guys, just add ISO disk in all ESXi hosts. So guys, let's. Uh, okay, let's go for another week. Yay! <laughs> okay, so guys, now what we need to do is first of all, we do a today we understood what is ESXi host, uh, where is the my computer for ESXi host, and today also we we, we looked at also we looked at uh, so my computer of ESXi host is here, you can add more desks, so we do have a desk here. Uh, secondly, we do have uh, here ESXi, so ESXi hosts are here, you can just add them. I was just installing this other one. Now, now one last thing to do is upload one ISO on one of the disks. Upload one ISO on one of, so I need to upload an ISO in this. So for now this data store is empty, on this data store there is nothing. I need to add 2008 ISO on this. I need to add 2008 ISO on this. So 2008 ISO, how do you add it? So here, there are two, if you go to browse data store, there is something called upload, there is something called download. But you need to upload from VC center, VC server, from your VC. So first of all, we need to copy ISO from our host machine to VC, and from VC we can upload. Because on your VC, it doesn't exist, right? So here, first of all, I need to bring ISO on my VC. So I'm going to put it here on the side. And I am going to place this on this side and go to my ISOs. So this is here. I do have um, ESXi uh, 2008 ISO. I'm, I'm just going to bring it on, uh, on my VC server. Or we can share the drive as well. Okay, it's not bringing up. Um, so what I can do is I can on my VC, on VC go to settings. Just bring it here, 2008, and then on your on your VC go to settings, and within settings go to options, go to options within settings go to options. And then within options, go to shared folder. And then here say enable shared. Always enabled. And then add. Just to copy or paste. Uh, if it is working, it's fine. If it is it working. It. No, if some it, it should drag, it should copy, but sometimes it doesn't. The clipboard doesn't doesn't work. So here I'm just gonna browse and I'm gonna go to my disk where where, where I have the, my ISO is on E drive. And your ISO, wherever your ISO is, just, just share that drive. So once you share the drive where the ISO is, it will look like this. I think your would be maybe in C drive, or maybe desktop. If it is on desktop, you can share desktop. On C drive? On C drive? Okay, that's fine. And here, all you need to do is, it is always enabled and share it. Once it is shared, once it is shared, press OK. Now, within VC, once it is all shared, all you need to do, open Windows Explorer. Open Windows Explorer. Just, just 2008. We just need 2008 for now. Yes. Okay. So here I'm going to go to, now in order to access network. the drive you need to go to network and go to VMware host and then shared storage and here I'm going to go to my ISO and then copy this here. You can upload directly as well. You can upload directly as well. Sorry? So uh, you can do file because this is just one file, ISO file, you can just say upload file. 
No, no, Okay. Now, once it is here, all we need to do is we need to go to ESXi host. Uh, sorry, vCenter again. Go back to your go back to your e ESXi here. Browse ISO. Browse the ISO disk. Now I need to upload on ESXi. Now I need to upload on ESXi. So you need to go into the ESXi host and go here and right click and browse data store. And now I can upload. So you need to upload a file. And when you're uploading a file, I'll select from desktop, just select 2008. Sir, from here, we can also go directly to the network. You can directly yeah. go there. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. So you can go directly to the network as well and and take it from there. Which icon you use for upload? Upload is this one. This one. Upload. And download. It should say, it should say uh, upload. Going up. Asmanate. <laughs> Okay, once it is uploaded, so then after, so let it, <coughs> let it upload, and as you can see, while it is uploading, CPU is going high on ESXi host, because now ESXi CPU is in use, also memory is in use, so CPU is in use more than 50%. While it is uploading, CPU is used on ESXi host. Then it will be done. Then, then it will go back. It will go back. Okay, so now, no. <laughs> guys, let's look at this. Now, now we are starting chapter number three, which is V Center understanding we we center what is we center we're going to understand what is we center we are going to understand uh what is uh we how do we use we center okay we center so for now what we have is this guys what do we have is this. So I do have server number one. Okay. And then so sir, I have two servers here. Let's look at this. Server one, server two, server three. We have these server. First server is uh, V Center. This is VC. This one is ESXi host. 
one and this one is ESXi host two. Guys, at one time I can only uh, I can only work with one server. So at one time with uh, uh, sorry the name is vCenter but it has uh, vSphere client on this. So it has a vSphere client. vSphere client. How do we define vSphere client? vSphere client is a tool to manage one ESXi host at a time. In order to manage multiple ESXi host, we use vCenter. So now comes vCenter. So first of all, vCenter. With vCenter, first of all, number one is uh, manage multiple. So this is used to manage multiple ESXi host at a time. Number one. And number two, the most important one, all high available, all advanced features, all vSphere advanced feature are available from vCenter. All advanced, none of the advanced features are available without vCenter. Now what are the advanced features? Advanced features as vMotion, advanced feature as DRS, SDRS, HA, FT, clustering, clustering, VDS, multiple ESXi host management, uh, switch management, multiple switches management, which is VDS. So, so this is first one. The first point was used to manage multiple ESXi hosts. And then these are the advanced features. And next thing that we need to understand is that it is a paid product. vCenter or VC or a vCenter is a paid licensed product. <coughs> licensed product. You can use it for evaluation for 30 days, uh, 30 days, 60 days, 60 days. Uh, it's a paid licensed product. Evaluation version is available for 60 days. After 60 days, vCenter will completely go down. It will stop working. After 60 days, must buy a license must buy a license or VC stops working or VC stops working which one? vSphere client? vSphere client is free Yes, one console we can we can operate multiple machines. So vCenter used for ES multiple ES manage multiple ESXi host. All vSphere high uh, advanced features are available from vCenter, vMotion, DRS, SDRS, HAFT. vCenter is a paid product. Evaluation version works for 60 days, and after 60 days it will completely crash. And either before you need to buy a license, it will stop working, not crash, but stop working, you need to buy a license. I think it is $5,000. It is. So the amount of features that it comes with, it's all worth it. So you just said advanced features. Yes. V-Motion, DRS, these are the advanced Yes, these are, these are referred to as advanced features. And we are going to these Yes, all of them. Such as, so... Advanced features are only available from vCenter, and this is what we need, we need to learn. Now, right here, 
we center we center is of two types we center is of two types number 1 number 1 we center number 1 we center appliance we center appliance it is it is linux based we center yes that's the vm and second one we center windows based installed on windows 2008 or 2012 server Okay, so this is a quick uh, basics of vCenter. So vCenter basically it is used for multiple ESM managing multiple ESXi hosts at the same time. Number two, all advanced features are available from vCenter. So if, 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 if some company does not have a vCenter, they cannot use DRS, SDRS, HAFT and all those uh, very important features in your environment. And the next one is it is good for 60 days. You must buy a license after that. And then vCenter comes in two versions. It is Windows-based version and, and, and Linux-based. Guys, Windows-based version is considered as a full vCenter version. Windows-based version is considered as a full vCenter version. So here, I'm going to say Windows-based vCenter is considered as full vCenter. Whereas Linux-based vCenter, it lacks some features. Linux-based vCenter, Linux-based vCenter lacks some features. Windows-based vCenter is for most of the enterprise environment. Whereas Linux-based vCenter is for smaller, considerably smaller environments. So now we're going to go into both detail. For now, this is the basics, and we have uh, so so we have uh, both of them here. So first of all, Linux-based. Today we're going to understand just a Linux-based vCenter. In order to have a Linux-based vCenter, let's quickly go through here. So. Is this written? Everybody's done writing. सुबह सुबह बैंड बजाते हैं याद है आपको कि नहीं ले बजाते हैं आपको हाँ एसेंबली से पहले बैंड आर्मी पब्लिक स्कूल उससे पहले बैंड फिर उसके बाद एसेंबली उसके बाद हजामत उसके बाद नाखून सब चीजें चेक ओके सो सो गाइस नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड सो आफ्टर दिस वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक गाइस एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट नाउ सो व्हाट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड टुडे इज वी सेंटर लिनक्स बेस्ड वी सेंटर लिनक्स इट्स रियली इजी प्रोडक्ट नॉट वेरी डिफिकल्ट द ओनली थिंग वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वी सेंटर इज नाउ सो नाउ रिमेंबर 
the main high availability features are only available through vCenter, which means at the moment in our environment, no vCenter exists. There is no vCenter here. So we have only VS Client. In order to have a vCenter, you need to install vCenter on this. So we are going to use the same CD and we can install a vCenter. So vCenter. But vCenter comes in two different versions. So vCenter. After this, vCenter comes in two different versions, Linux based and Windows based. Now, one thing to understand. Linux Windows based vCenter is more expensive and Linux based is less expensive. So here this is more expensive. And this is this is less or inexpensive. This is um, Now, why is it more expensive? Guys, it is more expensive because if you need to install Windows-based vCenter, if you need to install Windows-based vCenter, you first <coughs> need a Windows license. So first you need a Windows Server license. Windows Server license. And once you, and that Windows Server license, if it is a standard version, it is, it is, it is a, a kind of $500, 500 and standard version. And if you get an enterprise version, it is $1,000. So this is one license you need for Windows. And then on top of this, you need a vCenter license for Windows. So vCenter Windows based can only be installed on Windows servers. vCenter Windows based cannot be installed on Linux servers. For Linux, you need to use a Linux version. For Windows, you need to use a Windows version. But since Windows version has full feature that we just said, that Windows based, v, v, Windows based v Center is considered as full v Center with full fledged features. So you need to get two types of licenses. So right here, you need a $5,000 of a v Center license and maybe $1,000 of enterprise license. And on standard, it won't work. You need to get a standard. Yes. Whereas on this side, you need a you, Linux server is free. Linux server is free. You don't need to buy a license for that. Or maybe, uh, you don't need at least you don't need a windows license for this and then on on which you can install a vcenter appliance vcenter appliance now vcenter appliance this is known as vcenter appliance linux based vcenter is known as a appliance now what is the appliance appliance are so appliance so i'm going to define it appliance here uh appliances a -P -L -P -L -I -A -N -C -E. appliances what is the appliance so do we use appliances at home? Yes. What are what is considered appliances at home? Fridge. Fridge. Stove. Stove. Dishwasher. Microwave. And these are appliances. Guys, they are called appliances because all you need to do is bring a fridge at home and start using it. You don't have to do anything. And you need to you 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 can bring a microwave or dishwasher at home, just attach it. Guys, appliance is a ready-made software in virtualization. In virtualization world, appliance is considered as pre-installed, pre-configured software. It is called, appliance is known as pre-installed and pre-configured. In other words, ready-made. In other words, ready-made. We can think of this as if you go to a tailor, if you go to a tailor with a with just a boski shoot, uh, boski, what is that? If, with 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 just a cloth, with just a cloth, and he need to stitch it, he need to make it. That is not called ready made. Whereas you go to bigger stores and you get a ready made. So this is so this is I would call this is an appliance. And when he, when he needs to completely stitch it and made it and everything, that is not called appliance. So Windows base is not an appliance. This is a full-fledged installation. Here, you need to do a step-by-step, -step, next, 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 next. And after that, you need to install a database. It will be configured everything. So this one is a full version. This one is an appliance version. Appliance version is pre-configured, pre-installed. It's a pre-configured, pre-installed software. 
all you need to do is vCenter is already available on the on my on VMware website and it is pre-installed. All you need to do download it in your machine and then all you need to do is that just attach it to your environment and do some basic network configuration and it will start working. Whereas Windows based version is something like so is this is an appliance. This is what appliance. appliance it is one word for appliance is pre-installed, pre-configured. So it automatically you download in your environment and attach it and start working. Whereas Windows based v, v Center is not like this. Windows based V Center comes like this. You put send. Okay. Guys, Windows Base V Center comes like this. Windows Base V Center comes completely a uh, simple software. All you need to do when you bring it inside the environment, you need to do everything. All the installation, all the configuration. Why I did that? Because I wanted to show you that Windows Base V Center, you need to completely first install it and then configure it. Whereas, uh, whereas Redimate, whereas Appliance is already there, V Center in working condition. You need to bring it to your environment, download, configure it, and starts working. Okay. Now for this, appliance can only be working on Linux server. Whereas for Windows base, you first configure a Windows base server, and then you need to do this. Okay. Uh, so what is the appliance? It's a appliance is a pre-configured, pre-installed. It only works for it, it only works for Linux servers. So in another sense, uh, this vCenter is more efficient on Windows platform? Yes. Or is there an enhanced version of that appliance on Linux server? That's it, the appliance and the Yes. What is, is your question? Paid, my question is like, is there a paid version or uh, more? more uh, what, uh, Oh yes. So guys, the question here is, what is the major difference between Linux appliance and guys? To start with, both are V centers. So both are V centers. Both have these features. So both can be used to manage multiple ESXi hosts. Both can be used to leverage all these features. Both are licensed product. Both are not simple product. And but the only difference is that Linux-based appliance uh, has few features missing. It does not have uh, all the features that Windows Server, so the full-fledged version is considered to be Windows. Now, now as a thumb rule, we must remember that in most of the environment where you go to, they, they will have one full Windows version, and they might have more Linux-based versions. Because your company needs to buy one Windows-based license, and then they can buy more, uh, they can get more ESX uh, uh, Linux-based appliances. So Linux-based appliances, it's a smaller version of vCenter, but now in version 6, it has all the features. So now, le le let's see that. Let's see that through our slides. Yes, appliance cannot be installed on Windows Server. Appliance, it is a completely separate VM. Now, I'm going to go into appliance uh, uh, more uh, in a few seconds. So first of all, this is chapter number 3. And in chapter number 3, in chapter number three, this is called about vCenter appliance. Chapter number four is about vCenter. If we go here, describe how vCenter server functions, vCenter host communicates in a vCenter, and what is how to install vCenter installation, and what are the vCenter best practices. Now, first of all, this is what I said earlier, that vCenter server features that with vCenter, you can get all these features. Without vCenter, you cannot get these features. Meaning, in other words, in very small words, nobody is using internet very small words that right here uh, you have a vSphere client you do have a vSphere client but with just a vSphere client you cannot have vMotion, you cannot have DRS, you cannot have HA, you cannot have FT, you cannot have this, you cannot have this and you cannot have this. So in order to have all these features your company must buy a vCenter license, yes. Host profiles, host profiles are just like user profiles or just like host profile. for example if I have four machines for exactly of the same hardware, guys, what is a host profile? Host profile is, if I have four servers exactly same, and I need to configure all these servers exactly how this server is configured, for example, 
I format this. I have two disks inside, then they are formatted in three partitions and permissions and this and that and everything. I would keep the configuration in one profile that is known as host profile. And then I'll apply this profile on this. This will be exactly configured in the same manner. This is exactly configured in the same manner. That is called host profile. Right? From scratch, yes. All I need to do is save the host profile and then attach it with each server. So that all servers are configured according to this server. So, so that is host profile. But these are all of the features that only exist with vCenter. Next one, yes. Uh, Linux server is free, yes. You don't need to buy a Windows license. It is free. You don't have to pay for the Linux, no. Why? Are you, uh, are you asking me why? Did you? Yes, you asked me. So it is open source. It is open source. Okay. So here, now look at it. So this is vCenter 5.5 Linux based appliance. It is called VCSA. VCSA stands for vCenter Server Appliance. If somebody refers to what is VCSA, it is vCenter Server Appliance. And the next one introducing vCenter Server Appliance. vCenter Server Appliance is a new feature in 5.5. It is a Linux based virtual machine optimized for running vCenter. No knowledge, you don't need a knowledge of v Linux, so you don't need to know Linux for, for in order to work with this. It has no installation performed. It is pre-configured, just like I said, it is pre-configured and pre-installed. And all you need to do, quick, uh, quick 5.5 5 installation, you bring it into your environment, add it to your environment, and in the beginning, you just need to configure the IP addresses according to your needs. Because all companies' IP addresses are different. Once it is done, once it is done, it will be configured. Next one, there is no additional cost using method of vCenter license is required. But before using any one vCenter appliance, before using any one vCenter appliance, you should have at least one Windows-based license. So if you have one Windows-based license, if you have one Windows-based vCenter license, you can use 10 vCenter appliances for free. Okay? But you cannot just buy uh, a vCenter appliance. You, before using vCenter appliance, you must have one Windows-based license in your environment. Based on, uh, this, uh... this one, this one. This one. License? Yes, you want you should have one Windows based vCenter license and then you can buy uh, Then you can use 10 free vCenter appliances even on, Linux server, server? even on Linux server. Yes, so let's see so vCenter vCenter Linux based appliance License You you must have Windows. This is this is what my understanding is. Yes. Yes. So single instance VC. It is host per VC is one uh, K forward. Which platform? Okay, just a second here. For this, this, this building, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, this was your only chance for getting out of this lecture. <laughs> no, I think this this is the building. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> it's from a car. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, ice cream, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I imagination pay you up? MashaAllah. <laughs> okay, guys, yeah, let's look at this. <coughs> so, vCenter in previous versions. So, we had a uh, vCenter in all these <coughs> versions. Let's look at this. So, vCenter in. 5.1, 5.5, and 6.6 .6 management. They are, uh, 5.5 was only managed to vSkip write. 
Whereas 5.5 .5 and 6, they can be managed from both, from a web client and vSphere client. So meaning 5.1 vCenter can only be managed through vSphere client and not from the web client. Okay, next, authentication. This can support single sign-on 5.5, .5. this can support 5.5, .5, and this can play from, uh, this way I'm not, we're gonna discuss later. vMotion is restricted to data center object, vMotion restricted to a cross vCenter switcher. So vMotion is available, vMotion network is available, there is vCenter type, it, it, so this one, this, this vCenter came in two different versions, Windows and Linux based, Windows and Linux based, so meaning all of them came in two different versions. With version 4.5, there was no win there was no Linux based version. The Linux based version was first time introduced in version five. Before five, there was no Linux based version. The only one version that existed of vCenter was Windows based version. So this Windows based version was there right from the start. Version 3.x. So this is 3.x, 4.x, 5.x, and now 6. Whereas this one was first time introduced in 5.x and especially in 5 and then 5.1 and 5.5 .5, and now 6. So Linux based version was not even available in 4.5. Uh, next one. Okay. So this is next, next one. So here. So standard version. vSphere, standard version, advanced version, enterprise version, enterprise plus version. And then here you see price and okay, let's call it at night. What do you think? Really? Okay. Okay, let's call it at night. What do you think? Or oh, let's do the labs. Yay! Let's do the labs. Okay, okay. That, that, that. Really? Dil to nahi chala bol. Dil nahi chala. Sir, kabhi kabhi dil ko nahi maari. Guys, let's do the labs half an hour. It's it is half an hour. No, no, no. Let's finish. Finish it. So, but, but in return, there is a video on V Center appliance. Please complete the video. Okay. Let's complete the video. There is a video on. You already finished it? Guys, we need to do a Plyce version and a Windows. If you can, do a Windows version. What day is Oh, Tuesday. Just do a Plyce version. And then in the next lecture, we'll do Windows version. Windows okay? Okay, guys, we're done for tonight. My, my throat is completely stuck. Oh, yes, it is. Let's open the video and see. Okay, it's done. It's done. Right done. But I'm going to show you the video. Okay, it's right here. It is six. Okay, playlist and go to. I've, I've also started making uh, videos for 410, 411, 412 as well, according to chapters. So later on, once you finish, you can you can start following this as well. So for now. 4.11 will be starting. Hello everyone. Uh, uh, in this video series, I'm going to show you how to build a VMware vSphere 5.5 test lab environment. And this can be used in, uh, in, uh, in a test lab environment within organizations or it can be used for a classroom project as well. Those are 4.12. So let's get so started. So here it is, now, it is, guys. Uh, uh, 
Now, what I have is VMware VS, uh, VMware Workstation 10. Uh, in this VMware Workstation, for now, I have only one server, which is uh, Canips DC1. Canips being uh, my domain. Mm, here, as you can see, this. Yes, yeah, six. Video Hello, number six. everyone, and welcome to part six of this video series. We have VA 5.5 configuration. So installing, right. configuring. Uh, now, did I? Oh, I need to give you the software. As as you don't have the software. Do we, the I did I give you the software? We logged in. We okay. did. Uh, okay, so it's video number six that you all need to complete. Number one. And secondly, now, and secondly, the software you're gonna need is it, uh, this. You need to go to D drive, VCA, ISO, VCA, and VCA, here, uh, VMware. VCA, so the appliance software is just this. This one. This is Appliance and 3.5. I think some of you that don't have this file. You need this file. Appliance 5.5. Okay. Now, whenever it comes to Appliance, Appliance is a combination yes. of 3.5, which is OVF file and MEP file. Uh, yes, 3.5. So you, uh, you're going to need these files. If you have these files, and the MDK file. Uh, hmm? These files can be downloaded easily. No, no, no. Just follow uh, the video. In the video, it will it will let you know which file to use. Website, but please, do it. please appliance. complete it. Uh, or okay, guys, excellent, or very good. Thank you so much. Uh, be downloaded in one or we can do the lab here OBA for the next half an hour. No, 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 it's fine. We're done. Now this one file is a zip file of all these three files. Oh, yes. V motion in SCVMM, it's live motion.